the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Cabinet spokesman Bandulu Gunavardhan announces a number of key decisions put forward by the Cabinet of Ministers, inclusive of latest loans from the Asian Development Bank. What factors have contributed to the global decline in oil prices? And what potential impacts could this have on Sri Lanka's crude oil imports moving forward? The Colombo Bore sees no signs of recovery today, with the market continuing to decline. Excited to hear what went down at yesterday's Apple Glow Time event? From groundbreaking product launches to major announcements, we've got all the inside scoop. Stay with the Nightly Business Report for an in-depth look at everything you need to know. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandaru Gunavardhan stated that Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved borrowing $300 million from the Asian Development Bank in programs linked to reforms in financial and power sectors. At the cabinet press briefing held today, the minister announced a number of key decisions put forward by the cabinet of ministers. The cabinet approved $400 million US dollar loan on the 25th of September last year for Sri Lanka's financial sector stabilization and reform program. By December last year, 200 million US dollars was dispersed under the first sub-program. The remaining 200 million dollars will be granted after the completing 12 pre-policy activities, most of which are nearing completion. Moreover, approval has been granted by the cabinet meeting held on the 25th of April this year to appoint a committee to study the establishment of regulatory mechanisms for the petroleum, liquefied petroleum gas, liquefied natural gas and lubricating oil sectors in Sri Lanka and to submit the recommendations in that respect. Accordingly, recommendations have been submitted by that so appointed committees to introduce a new regulatory body for the energy sector. Moving further, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka prioritizes strengthening the bank resolution framework under its crisis management strategy. A financial stability fund managed independently will be established under the Banking Act No. 17 of 2023 to ensure effective resolution procedures. On to diplomatic relations, Cabinet of Ministers has approved the proposal of the country applying for membership of the BRICS organization and for a new development bank to be established under it. BRICS, originally comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, is an intergovernmental organization of emerging market countries seeking to strengthen economic ties. In terms of taxation, the Cabinet press release stated that the requirement has been identified to take action in respect of customs import duty, says Libby, special commodity levy and ports and airports development levy charged when the goods are imported which to be implemented as policy measures and based on the timely requests made by stakeholders in the field of local industry and trade sector. Import control regulations for payment methods No. 11 of 2024 imposed under the Import and Export Regulation Act No. 1 of 1969 have also been published in the Extraordinary Gazette No. 2398 of 18 dated 21st of August 2024. Accordingly, the Cabinet of Ministers has approved the proposal presented by the President. The Cabinet of Ministers has also given the nod to increase the Mahapolis Scholarship Allowance for university students to 7,500 rupees and the bursary to 6,500 rupees effective from April next year. The inaugural downtown duty-free shopping complex in Colombo's port city has officially opened, marking a significant development in the city's retail landscape. Traditionally, duty-free shopping is restricted to airport locations for travellers on international trips. But, however, this new facility offers the same duty-free privileges within the city, providing a unique shopping experience for eligible customers. Accordingly, four main categories of individuals qualify to shop and purchase goods at this complex. These categories are Sri Lankans and foreigners returning to Sri Lanka, tourists, Sri Lankans and foreigners leaving Sri Lanka, and diplomats and diplomatic organizations. The returning Sri Lankans and foreign residents has an annual allowance limit of US$2,000 and a quantity limit size per Schedule 1 of Extraordinary Gazette published. Purchases can be made on a single visit within four days from the first date of arrival and any allowance unutilized expires within one year from the FDOA. Permitted customer and one family member are allowed. Meanwhile, tourist has no annual allowance limit, no quantity limit and goods purchased are to be collected at the airport. Purchases can be made on multiple visits during the period of stay in Sri Lanka and any allowance unutilized will expire within one year from the FDOA. One customer will only be allowed. Meanwhile, departing Sri Lankans and foreign residents also has no annual allowance limit and no quantity limit while goods purchased are to be collected at the airport as well. Purchases are to be completed prior to the date of travel and only the permitted customer is allowed. 
Finally, diplomats and diplomatic organizations' allowances, quantity limits, frequency of visits, validity of allowances and allowed persons are determined as per the approval received from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. If a person is leaving Sri Lanka, they can visit the shopping complex before their departure, make purchases and collect the goods at the airport. Similarly, if someone is arriving in Sri Lanka, they can make purchases within four days of arrival as long as they stay within the eligible duty-free spending limit from the shopping complex. Sri Lanka's dollar bonds fell sharply yesterday as uncertainty about the country's upcoming election and its debt restructuring strategy hit sentiment. The declines left many of the crisis hit nation's bonds at their lowest level since January. They were bid at between 49.57 to 50 cents on the dollar yesterday, down from around 60 cents a few months ago. Sri Lanka will hold presidential elections on the 21st of September. The crucial vote will determine the future of reforms in the South Asian nation, weathering its worst financial crisis in decades. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. No diversion was observed at the Colombo Bulls as today's market session showed continued declines. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index closed in the red, marking the fourth consecutive day of downturn. To gain insights into today's session, we now turn to Minal Vikramage from First Capital Alliance. Yes, Sanui. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced another negative day continuing the downward streak brought on by poor sentiment caused by election uncertainty. The market ended at 10,571 points, marking a 91.87 point decrease from the previous session, with a turnover of 1.2 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 22.68 points to end the day at 2,937.53 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, the crossings recorded on John Hills Holdings, uh, Richard Pierce PLC, Alliance Finance, and Cable Solutions PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, SMB Leasing PLC, Tess Agro PLC, and Odell PLC. The top five losers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Mala and Phipps, People's Merchant, Mercator Shipping, Malvat and Malvat Valley, uh, Valley PLC Non Moting. Gold prices eased today pressured by a firmer dollar while traders braced for key U.S. inflation figures that could offer hints about the size of the Federal Reserve's interest rate reduction next week. Spot gold dipped 0.1% to $2,502.80 per ounce, while U.S. gold futures remain steady at $2,532. Market attention will turn towards U.S. Consumer Price Index data tomorrow and the Producer Price Index reading today. The headline CPI is expected expected to have risen 0.2% on a month-on-month -month basis in last month, unchanged from July. Gold prices remained locked in its consolidation phase within a broader upward trend for now, as gains were capped by a slight rebound in the US dollar. Oil prices edged down today as weak Chinese demand offset U.S. supply disruptions from tropical storm Francine and as global oil oversupply risk continued on the weight on the market. Brent crude futures were down 32 cents or 0.45 percent to $71.51 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures lost 38 cents or 0.55 percent to trade at $68.33 a barrel. Both benchmarks gained a around 1% at yesterday's settlement. The U.S. Coast Guard ordered the closure of all operations at Brownsville and other small Texas ports yesterday evening as Tropical Storm Francine barreled across the Gulf of Mexico. The port of Corpus Christi remained open, but with restrictions. The tropical storm is expected to strengthen into a hurricane soon. 
Recently, global oil prices have experienced a decline, prompting an examination of the factors contributing to this trend. Key elements influencing this outcome include changes in supply and demand dynamics, geopolitical developments and adjustments in production levels by major oil-producing countries. For Sri Lanka, this decrease in global oil prices could have a significant impact on its crude oil import sentiment. To get a forecast on that and a reasoning on this global sentiment, Let's connect Anjali Matthews, who is standing by from First Capital Holdings. Crude oil prices have seen significant declines, falling to US dollars 68.6 per barrel yesterday, September 9th, and marking a 14.3% decline month on month and a 20.28% decline year on year that was driven by concerns over global economic growth. The persistent concerns about weak Chinese consumption supply disruptions from the tropical storm Francine in the US, and a sluggish economy continues to weigh on demand growth in China, which is the world's largest oil consumer. Oil consumption in Europe and the US is also expected to, to decline as the summer driving season ends and as the refineries enter maintenance mode. And the expectations of an oversupply in the oil market further pressures prices with OPEC recently postponing its production increase until December. And as a result, WTI futures fell below US dollars 70 per barrel for the first time since December 2023. For Sri Lanka, the decline in global crude oil prices presents an opportunity to alleviate some of its economic pressures. Crude oil accounted for around 6.8% of total imports in 2023, and fuel overall represented 28% of imports, reflecting the company's dependence on fuel imports. Lower crude oil prices could help improve Sri Lanka's trade deficit by reducing the cost of energy imports. Today, the Sri Lankan rupee has experienced a notable depreciation against the U.S. dollar at commercial banks. According to Commercial Bank, the buying rate for the U.S. dollar has risen from 293 rupees and 44 cents to 295 rupees and 68 cents, while the selling rate has increased from 303 rupees and 25 cents to 305 rupees and 50 cents. We look at the exchange rates against other major global currencies. A short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lankan allies and Fly Dubai, the Dubai-based career, have announced an interline agreement commencing from yesterday, introducing more travel opportunities between Sri Lanka, the UAE and beyond on selected routes on the careers network. This interline agreement allows Sri Lankan Airlines passengers to easily connect through Dubai's aviation hub to over 30 destinations served by Fly Dubai. These locations include Africa, Central Asia, Central and Southeast Europe, as well as the Middle East. This includes unique holiday destinations such as Bucharest, Istanbul, Krakow, Mombasa, Naples, Sofia Trashkent, and Zanzibar. In addition, the interline will offer Fly Dubai passengers access to 16 destinations on Sri Lankan's robust network spanning Southern and East Asia, the Middle East and Australia, including Melbourne, Seoul, Singapore and Tokyo. Richard Natal, the Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lankan Airlines, stated that they are excited to partner with Fly Dubai to provide their passengers seamless connections and greater convenience and that this partnership reinforces their strategy to broaden its network and global reach, presenting customers with more travel choices and flexibility. The new agreement will offer passengers the convenience of single-ticket itineraries, through checked baggage and coordinated flight schedules for travellers. 
Interline flights under the agreement between Sri Lankan Airlines and Fly Dubai are now available for booking through the respective airline websites www.srilankan.com and www.flydubai.com as well as through travel agents and online travel agencies. The Bank of Ceylon is to raise 5 billion rupees via the issuance of Basel 3 compliant debenture issue with non viability write down futures. The Colombo Stock Exchange has approved its principal its application for the listing of the debentures. The issue is up for subscription whilst its official opening is on the 12th of September. BOC will issue 50 million BASEL 3 compliant Tier 2 listed rated unsecured subordinated redeemable 5 year debentures with non-viability write-down features. These will be issued at a price of 100 rupees each to raise 5 billion rupees. In the event of an oversubscription of the initial issue, the bank has the option to issue up to an additional 50 million debentures worth 5 billion rupees. Additionally, if both the initial issue and the second tranche are oversubscribed, the bank has a further option to issue another 50 million debentures worth 5 billion rupees. BOC said similar to its previous issues, the debenture issue is also structured and managed by the Investment Banking Division of the bank. The legal department acts as lawyers to the issue, while the corporate branch acts as bankers to the issue. The Colombo Stock Exchange and DFCC Bank PLC signed a Memorandum of Understanding recently with the aim of enhancing the facilitation of invert investment accounts for non-resident foreign individuals in Sri Lanka. Essential applicant information will be exchanged between the Colombo Stock Exchange and the FCC Bank to ensure an efficient and compliant account setup. This partnership aims to simplify the investment process and strengthen Sri Lanka's capital markets by attracting a broader range of international investors. Mr. Rajiv Bandarnaika, the CEO of the Colombo Stock Exchange, said that the Memorandum of Understanding simplifies overseas invest access with the undervalued market offering strong opportunities. SLT Mopitel, the national ICT solutions provider, has reaffirmed its commitment to greener business practices by implementing 100% renewable connectivity at Kumuna National Park. Known for its natural beauty, Kumuna is now equipped with eco-friendly technology that enhances visitor experience while promoting sustainable tourism. By offering complete connectivity at the Kumana Park, SLT Mobitel enables visitors to stay connected with loved ones and share their experiences on social media, significantly enhancing the overall visitor experience. This effort aligns with SLT Mobitel's recently launched co-connection ESG framework, which is designed to drive the company towards a greener, more sustainable future whilst ensuring robust governance and community service. Moreover, SLT Mobitel has adopted renewable energy solutions at Kumana, reducing thermal dependency by an impressive 95%. This significant reduction underscores SLT Mobitel's dedication to embracing sustainability, contributing to the company's broader goal of incorporating over 25% renewable energy into its base station network in the coming years. Overall, the project at Kumana National Park exemplifies SLT Mobitel's commitment to balancing technological advancement with environmental stewardship. Let's take a short commercial break all about yesterday's Apple event coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks inch slightly higher today but struggle to sustain an upbeat rally on Wall Street as concerns about a faltering Chinese economy dampened the market's mood. Today, China's exports grew at their fastest since March 2023 in August, suggesting manufacturers are rushing out orders ahead of tariffs expected from a number of trade partners, while imports miss forecasts amidst weak domestic demand. The broader Hang Seng Index in Hong Hong Kong gained 0.3 percent, though China's beleaguered property sector remained a huge drag, with the Hang Seng Mainland Properties Index opens new tap tumbling to a record low today. Elsewhere in Asia, Japan's Nikkei tacked on 0.23 percent and looks set to reverse five straight sessions of losses. 
Wall Street's three major indexes gained more than 1% as investors looked for bargains after the previous week's sell-off while they also waited for inflation reports in coming days and the Federal Reserve's next policy decision next week. U.S. stocks rebounded Monday after selling off the previous week. The Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all rose about 1.2% each. Investors had fled from equities last week when Friday's weaker-than-expected August jobs data followed weak manufacturing data on Tuesday. That led to the NASDAQ's biggest weekly loss since January 2022 and the S&P 500's biggest weekly decline since March 2023. Key economic reports out this week include consumer and producer prices ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting next week. Investors currently see a 100% chance policymakers cut interest rates, with about 70% odds that cut is a quarter of a point, according to CME's FedWatch tool. Stocks on the move included Boeing, which rose more than 3% after it reached a tentative deal with its largest union. And Arm Holdings jumped 7% after the FT reported over the weekend that Apple's new iPhone will include a chip using Arm's newest chip design. Apple unveiled that new device, the iPhone 16, Monday, which also includes AI software, though investors were not impressed as the stock finished flat. Apple's Glow Time event yesterday featured several new reveals, including the iPhone 16 lineup, a revamp of the base AirPods, the Apple Watch Series 10, and it refreshed to existing devices like the AirPods Max, which now includes USB-C. Here's a look at what happened. Today we're going to talk about Apple Watch, AirPods, and iPhone, and the profound impact these products are making in our lives. At its Glow Time event yesterday, the company took the wraps off of its latest iPhones with the base models called the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus. iPhone 16 raises the bar for what an iPhone can do. The biggest differences between the iPhone 16 and the last year's iPhone 15 are the introduction of a new dedicated camera button, the addition of the action button, and a new A18 processor and improvements to zoom camera quality. Apple is also touting its new iPhone lineup as being the first phones built for Apple intelligence at a time when tech giants are competing to inject their most important products with more AI. The new iPhones will have a redesigned rear camera bump that aligns the sensors vertically. This year's Pro models deliver breakthrough innovation and incredible new capabilities in this gorgeous design. The company also unveiled its next duo of top-end phones, the iPhone 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. The premium phones are bigger with the iPhone 16 Pro coming in with a 6.3-inch display and the iPhone 16 Pro Max with a 6.9-inch display, making the latter the largest iPhone ever made. The phones are largely similar to its predecessors, but they boast better hardware, improved cameras and Apple intelligence, including an extra button dedicated to using AI with your camera. Apple Intelligence is the suite of artificial intelligence tools the company is debuting on the iPhone 16 series. Features include change in the tone of messages, improved Siri, augmented searching through photos and videos, and new camera controls. Introducing Apple Watch Series 10 with our biggest display and thinnest design ever. The Apple Watch got a glow up on its 10th birthday as the Series 10 smartwatch was launched. It gets a larger screen, a thinner design, and a sleep apnea detection, making it seem like a notable step up from the Series 9. Apple says there's a 30% more screen size area for viewing more lines of text and further increase in the font size. The company claims it's the biggest wearable display it's ever built. This fall, we're excited to bring a stunning new finish to Ultra. Apple also revealed a new color for the Apple Watch Ultra 2, now available in set in black and titanium finish. This sits at the top of its company's smartwatch portfolio, offering the longest battery life on any Apple Watch. Apple says the coating was formulated to make it scratch resistant. Introducing AirPods 4. The fourth generation AirPods feature the same open design as their predecessor, but they have a refined new look and are powered by the Apple's H2 chip. Apple has unveiled two AirPods 4, both of which feature an open design and are the successor to AirPods 3. The stepper model has active noise cancelling, a feature not typically found in open earbuds. First revealed at WWDC, Apple Intelligence is mostly being presented as a more private large language model operating behind the scenes to improve existing apps and features. 
Retreating many of its WWDC reveals, Apple touted intelligence ability to survey inboxes with summaries surfacing for emails and notifications altered to provide summaries as well with priority notifications elevated to the top of their stacks. Apple also detailed Visual Search, which is powered by Apple Intelligence, which also combines the functions of a reverse image search with text recognition to add the details of an event to a calendar from a photo or pull information about a restaurant directly from a photo of it. Well, that is it from us at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest business and economic updates. Until then, I am Sunny Mudanayaka. Thank you for watching and have a good night.